This program is brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Preflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. There's nothing you can do to restrain God's love. The unrestrained operation of the infinite love of God that comes through Jesus Christ for mankind, especially for those who say, God, I'm going to quit trying to make this happen on my, my own. I'm, I'm going to depend on you, Lord. Now, I done tried all the medical advice, but I got to depend on you. I've tried all the experts' opinions. I'm depending on you. And that unrestrained love shows up. It is grace, this unrestrained love. Believers are not under the law because the penalty has been paid. Creflo and Taffy Dollar love connecting with you and understand the importance of using technology to do just that. We're constantly working to bring the gospel of Christ to thousands of viewers and followers all around the world. And we want you to get involved. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and X. And subscribe to Creflo Dollar Ministries on YouTube for live services and more. Together with you, we are making the word of grace available throughout every voice of social media. Let's vow to make it a better place Let every heart that needs to know Your love is here to stay Ooh, It's time we live a new life Ooh, Let us love shine bright in you We're saved by His grace So we embrace your love today We are How great thou art. You see, you see, you understand when I say I, I got to serve him. I got to praise him. I got to take all of the dog and night and the talking. I got to take all of it. But look at what he has done for you and for me. Look at what Jesus came as the compensation for what you couldn't afford. Even you going to hell would not have been enough to satisfy and pay everything that he did. And, and I don't understand people trying to talk about Jesus, dog out Jesus. I don't believe in Jesus. He was just a man, but he was your payment. If it were not for Jesus, you would not receive the mercy and the grace and the love and the forgiveness. That's why you're crazy. We'll never be able to match his grace. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. I'm not, I'm not talking some doctrinal teaching for a debate. I know this is true. Have you ever had God to do something for you that you know you didn't deserve? Have you ever had God to open up a door in your life and you know it should have stayed closed? Glory be to God. Have you ever had God save somebody in your family and you, they, they were no good for nothing dirty, but he saved them anyway, sanctified them, filled them with the Holy Ghost? And if that's not enough, look at what he's done for you. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Just for a moment, could you just lift your hands up? Oh, my God, my God, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Apart from this perpetuation, there can be no grace of God towards men. Subtract. Jesus, subtract this propitiation, this propitiatory death, subtract it. There will be no grace of God towards men. Love then did not disregard the law. <laughs> it satisfied its every demand and it fulfilled and established it and then it made it possible. It made possible a new new way of doing things, 
a new way for God to deal with those who by faith in this provision have established the law. By faith in this provision. Look at Matthew 5, 17 through 18, sometimes misunderstood, but in light of this context, you begin to understand this. Matthew 5, verse 17 through 18, he says, think not that I, Jesus is speaking here. He said, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to what? Fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till it all be fulfilled. And now the Bible makes it clear that through this love, you fulfill all the law. Because when you love, you won't kill. When you love, you won't steal. Love starts working on you and working with you. This new way is unrestrained love. There's nothing you can do to restrain God's love. The unrestrained operation of the infinite love of God that comes through Jesus Christ for mankind, especially for those who say, God, I'm gonna quit trying to make this happen on my, my own. I'm, I'm gonna depend on you, Lord. Now, I done tried all the medical advice, but I gotta depend on you. I've tried all the experts' opinions, I'm depending on you. And that unrestrained love shows up. It is grace, this unrestrained love. Believers are not under the law because the penalty has been paid. They are under grace, an entirely new and different method by which God deals with man. Look at Romans chapter 6 and 14 again. Can you see this? You're not under the law. Justice took place during the law. Things happened during the law. Sodom and Gomorrah what was the result of this justice not being satisfied. Romans 6, 14, for sin shall not have dominion over you. You are not under the law. Because if you were under the law, sin would be dominating you. You are not under the law, but you are under grace, which is why it's so awesome that you're not wanting to even do some of the things you used to do because you're not under the law. You, you're not being dominated by the past sins and, and, and lasciviousnesses of your past. You're under grace. New Testament believers that get born again today are not under the law, the Mosaic law that is uh, administered by rule keeping. You are under grace and by the grace of God and the spirit of grace, the operation of the Holy Spirit will now administer the character of the Ten Commandments into your life because you're no longer under the law. You are under the grace of God. You are not under the law. Well, you know, well, we're, we're, we're still under the Ten Commandments. You're under the Ten Commandments differently than they were under the Ten Commandments. They were under the Ten Commandments, and they had to satisfy this justice by trying to keep the rules. You are under the Ten Commandments, being administered by the Holy Ghost, and instead of you working for God, God's working for you. Changing you and giving you a desire to do what pleases him. Because the righteousness of God has been working in you, and that righteousness in you it is now determining your behavior. You've received, I'm a new creation. I'm the righteousness of God. And the day you accept your new identity, that new identity determines your behavior. And you look in a mirror one day and you say, oh my God, the things I used to do, I don't want to do no more. happen all in one day because some of us hard-headed and we have to go through a pressure cooker before we realize I need Jesus. Yeah. 
when justice has been satisfied once and for all, grace becomes sovereign. It becomes supreme. And it begins to reign unto eternal life and even in eternal life. I'll begin to teach you next week how grace is going to reign in three seasons. And one of those seasons is in the ages to come. Do you know you being raised from the dead is an act of grace? Do you understand uh, taking off your mortal and putting on your immortality is an act of grace? Glory, do you understand to be caught up to meet him in the air is an act of grace? Do you understand heaven is an act of grace? Grace ain't stopping. Grace is going to continue all the way on into eternity in the ages that are to come. That's why if you are so blessed to get any crowns for anything, the soul winner's crown or whatever, you ain't got no choice but to cast those crowns at the feet of Jesus because you know you and your smart self ain't responsible for none of it. So let me tell you right now, don't put the crown on your head. If you get a crown, cast it at the feet of Jesus and let everybody in heaven know, I know that if it were not for Jesus on my side, I know that if he didn't heal me, I know if he didn't save me, I know if he didn't mature me, it wasn't me. So I cast my crowns at the feet of Jesus. Y'all excuse me for hollering, but thank you, Jesus. Are you listening to me now? All right, that was number four. <laughs> number five, as we break this definition of this unmerited, abounding provision Glory to God of the operation, this, 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 this unrestrained operation of the infinite love of God that only comes through Jesus Christ. Got to get Jesus Christ now. Only come, it ain't going to come through your fancy traditional religion. The Bible says your tradition has made the word of God of no effect. You better know that Jesus is real and get to know him. No, your tradition is going to fool you the day you die. And then you wake up and say, uh-uh, it was true. You better understand God's word is real. You got to ask yourself, if your tradition is so good, how come you still got so much hell in you? You ain't changed a bit. You unforgiving, you mean, you got a bad attitude, and you go, and then when it's Sunday, you talk about your tradition. Your tradition is making the word of no effect. And you walk around deceived under your bad tradition. Did y'all, some dude on the news in, in, in one of the religions, I ain't gonna talk about it, but talking about he baptized people the wrong way and said instead of saying, I baptize you, that we should have said, you know, instead of saying we baptize you, you should have said, I baptize you, and said, I don't notice everybody that you baptized, you did it wrong, we gotta do it again. Do you actually think that God gives a hoot about an hour or we? <laughs> Well, my baptism didn't take, I had my wig on. I should have taken it off. It, it should have touched my real head and not a wig. You, you act, well, you ought not get a tattoo because you get a tattoo, you're going to go to hell. Do you really think that God going to keep somebody out of heaven because they wrote on their arm instead of paper? <laughs> what's the matter with us? Full of religion, that's what's wrong. We don't know God. Because once you know him, the religion can't stand up in the presence of the almighty God that saved you and raised you and <laughs> baptized a man who oh, 30 something years ago maybe over there in the chapel when we were over there and Brother Bob Watley and some of my deacons that have gone home to be with the Lord, we baptized this one lady and the, they found out the heat pump had gone out so the water was cold. <laughs> And if we did it outside, it was going to be cold anyway, so we went ahead and, and did it. And a dear sister came up. Now, you got to read my lips on this. I can't say it. <laughs> <laughs> if I say it, y'all going to say, the rim up there cussing now, you know. <laughs> and so she came and she said, oh, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. And I said, I baptize you in the name of the Father. Oh, Jesus. I do. Oh, in the name of the Son. Oh, Jesus. And in the name of the Holy Ghost. Oh, Jesus. And she went down. We put it in the water. And she came up. She said, oh, sh <laughs> 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 
Now, if you didn't catch that, I can't do that no more now. Deacon Bob looked at me. He said, uh, Pastor, you think we need to take her down one more time? I don't know if that took. And at that time, I didn't know nothing about grace, but I said, but I, don't, I don't believe we do. God was going to have to clean her up for that anyway. You can't, you can't know God thinking stuff like that because when, when you start knowing him and you're talking to him every day and he's speaking to you and you're walking with him and you, you sense his presence and, you know, it's so easy, you know, for, for some people they sit and they listen to me, but I've seen this. I've seen people supernaturally healed. I've, I've seen prayers answered. I've seen lives changed over these 41 years. The stuff that I have seen, you, you can't convince me that he's not real. You too late. And somebody said, well, how do you know he real? Well, how do you know that your pound cake is a pound cake? <laughs> you went in the kitchen, you followed the recipe, and it produced what it said it would produce. Well, I went into the spiritual kitchen, I took the Word of God, and I began to bait what this Word says, and it showed up in my life, in the life of my family, and I am convinced I have the right recipe. If you don't believe what I'm preaching, go and cook it for yourself, baby. I just want to pick this whole thing up and just throw it. <laughs> Some say, why? I just, it's just so it comes that book. He's just good. He's good. He just, he's so good. He's so good. I got, I ain't, I'm not going to say I can't take it. Bring it on. Keep bringing it on, Lord. He's so good. Woke me up this morning. Didn't have to do it. Started me on my way. Didn't have to do it. I looked outside. It was a new day I've never seen before. He didn't have to do it. Bless my family. Bless my wife. Didn't have to do it. I'm still alive and well. Hallelujah. He didn't have to do it. He didn't have to do it. But there's nothing I can do to restrain his love. This gospel has got to be preached. And I'm, I'm willing to preach it no matter what it costs. It might cost me some friends and it might cost me some invitations. Folks don't want me to come preach at their church no more. They, they'll call me a heretic and all that stuff, but I, I, I gotta preach it. And, and, and when it's all over with, then the Lord will let you know it, 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 it'll be all right. I, Forty-something years ago, I was a part of all those movements. A big part. Thousands of people would show up in basketball arenas. And I don't even know how many thousands that showed up in Uganda. It was like bigger than a football game. And, and I didn't understand this. And once I understand this, I'm like, Lord, give me, give me a do-over. I got it now. And you know what I got? It's, it's all about Jesus. It's always been about Him. All right, let me get it together, boy. I start to just fall out on y'all and just stay. Just, and then y'all say, what are we going to do here on the ground? And somebody say, fall out too, I guess. All right. 
Let's go to another slice of this definition. Here's the fifth slice. Grace is on behalf of man, especially all who depend on him and believe. Grace is on behalf of man. And when I say man, I mean mankind. I mean womb, man with a womb, man without a womb, man. Grace is the operation of God's love on behalf of man. Now, this is pretty amazing here because grace seems to be reserved for man only or man alone. That's interesting. Grace seems to be preserved for man alone, not angels. You know what hell is? Like hell was a part of God's justice for for Satan and his angels. And there's a part of the atmosphere, I don't want to get in that right now, that, that's holding certain demonic forces in chains. It was not ever created for man. This grace is only for believers in Jesus Christ. All right, now, go to, go to Titus chapter 2. Let's read the King James. Titus, Titus chapter 2, 11 and 12. I know that the Bible says that Jesus died for the sins of the whole world. What does that mean? For everybody that's ready to believe, salvation is available. It's available for everybody to believe. The only difference between some of us and people who are not believers, you believed, and so grace is now for the ones who accepted the gift and believe. Watch this. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation, it has appeared to all men. People who are, are, are not saved, this, this grace has, has made salvation available for them, but they have to receive it. They have to believe it. Because, look, listen what it says, in, go ahead, go ahead with this, Titus 2. He says, this grace teaches us, not the unbeliever. It teaches us, not the world. It teaches us. And that's amazing. Grace teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. How do you say that, you know, under grace you sin, when grace is what's teaching you not to sin? Grace teaches us, and the us is clearly referring to those who have received and believed in him. Grace teaches us. One of the basic acts of God's grace is to declare righteous the sinner. That's the basic act, to, to justify the sinner. Now, let me give you proof of this from the scripture, uh, from the NLT. Look at Romans chapter 3, verse 21 and 26 from the NLT. One of the basic acts of God's grace is to justify the sinner. That's what he wants to do. But it doesn't stop there at justifying the sinner. He wants to teach us. Are you searching for a deeper understanding of God's grace? In the series, A Deeper Definition of Grace, Creflo Dollar gives a solid understanding of our covenant and a true picture of our God. Grace is the truth. Anytime you hear grace, it's Jesus. Jesus is the source of grace. The very same grace that brings salvation also teaches those who are saved how to live pleasing unto God. Growth in your spiritual life can only come by grace. He will work out his plan for your life. And you know what? He's working out that plan right now. All three messages in this series can be yours today for a love gift of 20 U.S. dollars. DVDs are available for a love gift of 30 U.S. dollars. Be sure to visit CreflodollarMinistries.org and click eStore, scan the QR code, or call the number on your screen to get yours now. Hey everybody, I want to give you a personal invitation to attend the Grace Life Conference, The Reunion, July the 11th through the 13th. Learning to live the Grace Life will address every emotional issue that you're dealing with in your everyday life. 
Whether it's loneliness, insecurities, love, self-worth, belonging, it doesn't matter. God's grace deals with every human need. You need to be at Grace Life 2024. It's a reunion. It's a gathering of believers and it's freedom. When people understand grace, they are empowered to change. So don't miss this opportunity. I'll see you at Grace Life 2024, The Reunion, July the 11th through the 13th. Come prepared to get your whys answered. The grace of God will change you forever. I'll see you there. We want to be sure we are living according to what God has taught us about giving. And we understand that giving and receiving is a spiritual law. It's a reflex of God's love. And I'm so glad that Taff and I begin to understand how to walk in this principle. But we give not out of necessity. We give out of a cheerful heart. We give because we're grateful and we're thankful to what God has done. You know, I, I want you to pray about uh, becoming a giver into Creflo Dollar Ministries today. And if this ministry has blessed you in any way, consider sowing a seed of any amount and we will greatly appreciate it. Thank you in advance for your support and God bless you. Your financial donations into this ministry work all over the world to change countless lives. If you'd like to support our efforts to save the lost, you may call in or visit creflodollarministries.org today. God bless you. I don't ever want to take for granted that you've received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And there's no better way to embark upon a new stage in your life than to enter into a personal relationship with Jesus. So if you want to become born again and begin an exciting, intimate relationship with Jesus, I want you to pray this prayer with me. And I'll, I'll say it so you can repeat after me. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he died and was raised from the dead and has forgiven all of my sins. And I receive him into my life right now as my Lord and personal Savior. So by faith, I declare that I am saved. Praise God. Now, that simple prayer change your entire eternal destination. And we want to welcome you to the family of God. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe. The preceding program was brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries.